So I guess like most, if not almost all riders back in the day used to rack the paint, the big coats. Yeah, I I, I don't know anyone that had money for paint. Mm. I, I didn't have an income as a kid, you know, and um, it was harder where we were because there weren't many stores. So you can only go in so many times. People know who we are. They know that you do stuff around town. So go for journeys in the car, you know, that kind of, I didn't have a car, but other people would take us. You know, a couple of girls that had their license would drive us to spots and like the different distance yeah yeah i'm talking of... like interstate type thing over the border and different areas and just just to get paint just to get paint yeah 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 rural wow. spots country towns all kinds of places so so then if you're driving that far out to get paint you guys aren't getting like three five tins you guys are getting no you're gonna you can't it's not not worth it That's... it's too far you know you got to get a lot or it's not just it's not worth it so you know. So I guess for someone who never experienced that, how did you guys back then? Because obviously now it's different. Yeah. Like even I know now that if you walk into Bunnings, everything's caged off. Yeah, yeah. And you can't just do that. No. I don't even know how you would do it now. And now you've got shops. Well, they used to actually use a postcode for Bunnings. This years ago, I don't know if people knew this, but the postcode was the cage lock for years. <laughs> I don't even think people, I don't know how many people knew that. So how did you know that? I worked it out. You watch people when they're doing the combination, you know, they leave the cage open or something. And did you try that in different bunnings? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it worked yeah, yeah. every time. Not every time, but But a lot of times. Time, yeah. So yeah. you just so you'd go into I'd, I'd stop racking, so it didn't matter, you know. But I'd still open the cages and freak yeah, them out and, and it's stuff still... and get a few tins here and there, but not I wasn't really into it. It's just one of those it's just in, in your mind. You go, Well that's obvious, you know. Yeah. clueless it's kind of <laughs> stupid yeah you know? wow so i guess when you're going into something like that when you were doing that back in the day because i seen um is it star wars when i seen that as the dude he's talking about they used to go on with the big coats yeah and they yeah. would just stuff their coats and yeah. their pants i'm assuming you guys were doing well, the same where, sort of where shit. we lived it was freezing all the time or not in summer but so i was wearing jackets constantly and hoodies mm. or whatever so you just yeah you just obtain sometimes bags depending it really came down to who you with. There's one guy that was really good, Raid. Um, he would get a lot of paint. And when I was with him, so would I. And we would sort of help each other out. Mm. You know, and then other times it'd be just like, same thing, a youth council would say, hey, we've got this job. We can't pay you because you're under 18, but we can supply you X amount of paint. Would that be enough? We'd go, no, it's got to be this amount. And we've got to take the paint home to test it and then we'll bring what we need to the job. So, you, you know, started that getting paint that way. That's how you get paint, yeah. You're just smart, you know. Yeah, word. You don't have to do anything wrong. You just obtain it, invent it, you know. Mm. Well, so. that's that's business, like you say. Yeah, that's well, just... we weren't in business. We were in business of painting. And but you were paint. doing yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we were still getting paint, know. yeah. Like, I don't know anyone. Like, I remember when we were young, a couple of times, we would all chuck in a dollar and get a touch up and we'd write our BMXs, it's like 85, 86 or something, probably 85. And, or even 84, and you know, what little money you had, if you could scrape together one after, you might, you might grab a can of Kill Rust or, or a certain touch-up colour, mm. you know, and we'd just cruise around our bikes and pass it around, drop tags, tags were this big and tiny and more like little logos back then, there weren't these big fat cap things, there were no fat caps, um, it's all fine line kind of stuff, and actually tags in Adelaide, I remember one thing I really liked in the early days were really well done, um, they always had a little bit of flair or something original to each one. Similar styles in some way. Mm. Um, but they were, you know, this big and they were neat and they looked good. And, you know, we would always do smaller tags because get more paint out of the paint, you know. But once the freights, you do a throw up, you want it as big as possible. Now, some are, I recently saw some of the ones I did when I was young. Tracked them down and just came across them on the internet. Some of them were like this big. But I would have been up to this high, you know, mm. a bit taller and tiny. And um, in ones you see a few later, they're fucking three times the size. Because as you get older and better paint, or you learn more, you, you go bigger kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. The, 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 the lesson. Oh, yeah.